I think five games after the World Cup, to say 75% of people don't think you should be in, I think it's a bit savage. Hello guys and welcome to That's The Tea. I'm Nicole Holiday and I'm here with DJ and Dulwich Hamlet footballer Monkey, West Ham's Julia Simic and Guardian journalist Susie Rack. Welcome to the show, guys. So this week, we're going to be chatting Lionesses with England star Beth Mead, a full FAWSL roundup. We've got an interview with Chelsea's Guru Rayton, and we'll be talking NWSL playoffs and everything from the world of football. Now, it's been a while since we saw each other. It's been two weeks since the last show. A lot's happened in that time. We've had the international break. A lot to talk about there. Mm. Our Lionesses, well... Julia, I'm just going to go with our lionesses. You're yeah. part of this. I'm just trying um, this. <laughs> so, obviously, first game, lost 2-1 to Brazil. Not great. But then beat Portugal 1-0. I mean, what did you make of those performances? I'm, I'm a little bit um, surprised that the mm. press is so... Like, negative oh, really? Yes, like, <laughs> just from, yeah, yeah, just from outside, because I thought, like, England done okay. really well in the World Cup. And I thought, wow, that's the next top nation in women's football. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, like when you're foreign, you don't really watch every single game or something. And I, I just hear this like it's against the coach or against the manager, a lot of goals, obviously, they concede. And it's, it's a bit like, oh, where, where did this come from? Like, why is the mood like getting a little bit negative after this great World Cup? But obviously, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's well. been quite a few losses yeah. consecutively. Five games problem. without a win, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to say that, but thank you, Susie. Yeah. You take yeah. the mic. I'm a, I'm a British, <laughs> yeah. so it usually turns that way. Okay. I mean, I'm no it's journalist, just, but... It's just you. <laughs> the I know. <laughs> Susie is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the problem is, is I, I've actually been pretty fair to Phil generally, well, until yeah. last week, um, because I actually quite like him. Oh, you know, he's fo great. Following him around the World Cup, um, and before then, you know, I was at his very, very first press conference, and he's actually a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Um, but he does not think before he speaks and so he says some really stupid stuff and there's only so long you can kind of like forgive that before you have to say look you've, you've got to stop doing this and um, I like in terms of on the pitch I kind of think he's been all right like I don't think he's done anything terribly wrong I think the Brazil game which we lost I mean particularly the first half I thought it was actually an okay performance yeah. um, the second half was a bit terrible but um, uh, the Portugal game, on, on the other hand, was dire, but they had loads of injuries and stuff and there's loads of people out, so you can kind of forgive it. It was that he came out and said that the two games have been outstanding. That yeah. was, I mean, just don't, don't say it. We've got his quote here, actually. I hope I do feel justice. You earn your luck, and the performances over the last two games, in my opinion, have been outstanding. It has been my best, most enjoyable camp since I have been a manager with this England team. Do you think he's just trying to keep yeah. morale up? Mate, yeah. yeah. Like, the he's trying is, to back it takes him. the conversation, like, like if, if he had just said, yeah, we weren't great, but we got the win that we desperately needed to end the five-game run, yeah. no one would be talking about it anymore. It'd be over. Yeah. But because he's said it's outstanding, when, yeah. when we're all there, we've all watched when it, we can't, I like, writing an article on it, I've, I've written the match report, and it's been like, we weren't great, but we got the win, that was the important thing, mm. blah, blah, blah. And you can't really put in a quote saying they were outstanding without him looking a little bit crazy. I also read an interview when he said he want to win the Olympic Games and yeah. then you want to win the Euros. But right now, maybe it's not the time to set these high goals because of, yeah, they're not really doing well in the moment. But I kind of like this attitude because he's so brave and he's yeah. just sort of going like, keep going forward and it's really... I know it's, it's it's good. I would lo love to have a coach as a player. Like this, as I was a player. about to say, yeah. What would I you? I would follow would him one hundred percent because I I like his attitude more than uh, let's see how we do mm. and mm, maybe we should win now. Now we have mm. to win now. Everyone knows this, and of of course there's a lot of pressure. But maybe with him being so outgoing, it takes a little bit more on him than mm. on the players, like for mm. the press and everyone focusing on him instead of maybe the performances. Something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in a way. He's too honest, because obviously, Susie, you were saying that some of the stuff he comes out with, you're a bit like, eh? But maybe he's just very honest and he says what he thinks and maybe he just doesn't try and sort of sugarcoat it or say what maybe people expect him to say. There's a limit though, isn't there? Because when he says things like, I see things that no one else sees <laughs> and things like that, I mean, that's just not true and you just look really, really arrogant and he's not an arrogant guy, which yeah, is... Yeah, yeah, like, And mm -hmm. he's now got this very, like, like, 
public perception of being arrogant and he's not. He's I mean, I'm totally it. biased because obviously I've spent a lot of time with yeah. him in the summer and like you said, he's, he's great. He's like such a lovely guy. So <laughs> I always feel, I'm, I feel like a protective mum. Yeah. And I don't talk about feel that way. Um, however, that's interesting because uh, we did a poll on the Facebook group, Footballs Football. Mm -hmm. And the question was, is Phil Neville the right manager for England? 75% said no. Wow. Oh, well. 75% Susie's, doesn't surprise Susie's me. Susie's laughing. Really? I mean, See, it doesn't, I, like, I, I, like I say, I've been one of the tamer journalists yeah. in like criticising him. Like, I've, I've generally thought he deserves time. Did you think yeah. the World Cup was a success? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like, because they had bigged up winning so much while Phil had, because he had said, you know, we, we, we're going to win, we have to win, we want to win, mm -hmm. um, we should be winning. Like, I thought that put a bit too much pressure on mm -hmm. it and anything less than a semi-final I think would have been seen as a step backwards. But the semi-final, mm -hmm. like, semi you're losing to the champions, I mean, the US are just a cut above. So, yeah, I thought it was And it was an amazing game. It was such a game. Yeah, it was such a game. Yeah, it was such a I was so upset So I think after. five games after the World Cup, to say 75% of people don't think you should be yeah. there, I think it's a bit savage. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pause there because we're going to give Beth Mead a quick call, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hi Beth! Okay? Hello guys! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us Beth. So firstly, quick chat about the Lionesses. Congrats on your winner against Portugal. How important was that win after a difficult run of form? Yeah, I think um, at the moment we've put a lot of pressure on ourselves as a team. Um, you know, I think we've had a bit of a hangover since the World Cup. Obviously going out the semi-final, we had high expectations to get to the final. Um, so yeah, I think we, we took it quite hard and we're trying to get back into a rhythm and a style and personnel, getting used to each other again. I know we all go away to our teams and then coming back, it's quite hard for us to gel. Um, and obviously we have no competitive games right now, as in we're just playing friendlies because we're obviously hosting the Euros. So, yeah, I think it's a tricky time but for us to get that win. And yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough that the ball dropped to me on the line and I could tap it in for us, but... I think it was crucial for us to get that win. Next up, Germany at a packed out Wembley. How excited are you about that? And do you think that could become more of a regular thing for the Lionesses? Yeah, I really hope so. I think it's massive. I think I, um, I remember when the last game at Wembley was against Germany and I was actually sat in the crowd watching. So hopefully being on the other end of that is going to be pretty amazing. And especially in front of, well, I think we're saying up to 80,000 fans at the moment. So I think for even a women's game in general to get hopefully anywhere near that is unbelievable and to play at Wembley is I mean it's where we want to be we want to be able to call somewhere home and play there and you know make it kind of our place and be hard to hard for teams to come to okay we need to speak about Arsenal a uh, difficult result on Sunday first drop points of the season how are you feeling after that defeat to Chelsea yeah as an Arsenal team I think we, we've took it quite hard and I think we don't want to feel this feeling again, so I guess, like I managed said, it's come at a good time for us and kind of give us a kick up the backside. But yeah, we can't really rest on our laurels too much because we've got a game on Wednesday in Champions League, and I think that's perfect for a footballer that you can get straight back into action and hopefully put things right. But yeah, we did devastated with losing the three points. So Arsenal, City, and Chelsea have all made a really strong start to the season. Do you think the title race is going to be even closer this year than last year? Yeah, I would say so. I think um, the league's getting more competitive. Everyone's full time. Um, yeah, it's going to probably be the hardest season to win a league yet. And I mean, a massive aim for us is to get back to back titles. But yeah, um, it's going to be very close. Uh, Luckily, we've got another game to play against Chelsea and we've got City to play twice, so they're the games that we need to be really getting three points in. Beth, thank you so much for joining us on the show. No, okay. no Best of luck with the game in Prague. No problem. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Bye. Aww, I love Beth. She's great, isn't she? Hello, Beth. Package. Oh, package. <laughs> I'll, sign, I'll sign for it, yeah. Nice. She's so cute. I'll sign for it, yeah. Your name is? Lucy. Lucy. Yeah, yeah nice I'm great. Name. Lucy. <laughs> I was gonna, but you could kind of tell from what Beth was saying. I mean, Arsenal are going to be disappointed with that loss on the weekend. Were we surprised? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Um, I only caught the back end of it because I was playing like, myself, and then I went upstairs to watch it. But I know that we scored within like the first what nine minutes, mm -hmm. okay. and obviously last e last season was it was a five 0 win last season, mm -hmm. yeah. and I was yes. thinking here we go, yeah. <laughs> and then one? I was like no it didn't happen. But um, I'm surprised. But then again, I'm I'm not. I probably got a bit ahead of myself to be honest. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's nice that Chelsea are, yeah. are competing again. They're great, and they're yeah. a great team. They've got yeah. brilliant players. I think you were just waiting for Chelsea to finally win a good game or win an important game as well yeah. for them. It was a massive three points, three points yeah. I think, because they just were under pressure already, like because they just drew Brighton and didn't really play well the beginning of the season. And everything focused on them already because they also want to make it back to the Champions League. Yeah. And just, you need to win these games, obviously. And now they're back on track a little bit. Like they now maybe get a little bit of confidence from this mm -hmm. game and that they're still able to beat these big teams in the league. And I think they're still one of the top three teams in, in the league. Well, I that's like the, win the league. Yeah, well, yeah, it's so tight, isn't it? Between It's going to be really... Yeah. City, Chelsea, mm. Arsenal. If mm. you know, Chelsea just honest. have this big advantage to not, not play in international. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they yeah. just play the the national competitions and they can focus on the league and the cups. Uh, whereas Arsenal already need to manage players but to get them fit. Themselves. They're stretching, they're stretching themselves. Yeah, Chelsea's yeah. squad is just so huge in yes. comparison. I mean, look exactly. at the benches yesterday. Yeah. Um, Arsenal had two 17-year-olds on the bench. Chelsea mm -hmm. had a host of internationals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like. You, you can't compare it. Yeah. They bought on Backman and Forrest um, yeah. and, and, well. and they made the difference. Yeah. It was yeah. uh, Backman's assist. Yeah. And then uh, the best Arsenal can do is take off Leo Volti, who like nursing an injury, and bring on Jordan Nobbs, who is also like coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. Like that is. It was won and lost on, yeah. on the strength and of the squad. And it's a bit like how you can make it through the whole season. Arsenal, for example, mm. they struggled last season already, right? Yeah. With yeah. A lot of injuries. If they manage to get everyone fit and through mm -hmm. the season, they have a big chance to win a lot this, this season. But it mm -hmm. also comes a little bit with luck. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, have these players on board for a long time and have less injuries and mm -hmm. yeah, just just win these important games. It's yeah. very interesting. Um, there were over 4,000 people that went to that game at King's Meadow, which is that's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was Meadow rocking good. as well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Was good really atmosphere. Good. Oh, you were there. Buzzing, yeah, like mm -hmm. really good atmosphere. Um, in fact, the Stamford Bridge game was like a similar atmosphere. I thought it was better oh, than Oh, really? The That's so one. interesting because like, really Stamford Bridge was what, 24,000? Yeah, yeah. It's like serious and like they, you know, they've got yeah. song sheets and they're, mm -hmm. they're all singing and chanting. Um, and I, like Emma Hayes said after the game, she said that she said in, at half time in the dressing room that, um, that she said to the players, score and this place is going to like yeah. erupt. Yeah. yeah. And it did. Like it was electric when they scored. And I'm an Arsenal fan, so it was. Yeah. Like, for me, but <laughs> like, um, yeah, no, like, it, I mean, it just totally lifted. Um, Speaking of Emma really Hayes, have we all seen yes. a video? Yeah. Yeah. Singing the song. Singing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she played that to us in the press conference. Oh. She like paused the press conference. We asked Listen her about to the me fans. Sing, honey. Yeah. <laughs> we asked her about the fans and what she thought. She said, "This is how much I love the fans." This is how, and got up the video like oh. rummaged in her bag, for yeah. phone, got it up on the table and played it for us. I love that like, though. I love yeah. seeing that like great, human yeah. side to them as well, and yeah. like. You know, not a bad voice, Emma. Not yeah, too bad. Right, no. Yeah, it was all right. But okay, moving on quickly. Uh, one player who has been key for Chelsea so far this season is new signing Guru Rayten. We caught up with her to find out what life has been like adapting in West London. I'm a left footer, so everything left side first, then right. But all oh, the socks, you know, they are marks L and R. Yeah. I always have to switch them because hopefully my left foot will give my right foot something extra. <laughs> I played in Norway my entire life uh, and I felt it was time to do something new, new challenge. And Chelsea have followed me for a while and, and when they uh, called me I just, I knew I had to say yes. Chelsea is a big club, there are people everywhere. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fun, fun being a part of something that big. I've come here to work hard and improve my playing. Uh, I want to take new steps as a footballer uh, and I want to be good for the team. Playing for a club like Chelsea, the, the main goal always has to be winning. So it's already set. Lovely to hear from Guru there. She's doing very well, isn't she? Mm. She's been very yeah. impressive so far. Now let's move on to Liverpool Bristol. One. One. I mean, Liverpool will be happy to get a point. 
and everything. So, yeah, so far this season, we had a chat with manager Vicky Jepson about the start of the season and the squad photo that's got everyone talking. We've posted our picture this week with the men's first team, two teams, one club. To do that, we've, we've got to make sure we live by it now. We've, we've posted it out there from a PR point of view, but we've got to make sure we live to those standards daily across the club internally. Our players gain lots from, from travelling out there with, with Clapp and the men. We're two different, two different setups in a way. Uh, even though we are one club, we wear the same badge. I think in any football club, there will always be more investment in the men's team than the female's team. We're in a, a rebuild process. We've been through quite a lot of turbulence with the club with lots of changes that's gone on. Um, so now it's, it's about building a better relationship with the club internally. Um, we've now got more investors and, and good uh, partnerships now that are on board that are representing us this season. I'm excited to push on and, and find our first win of the season and uh, build from there really. I think we're, we're in a situation now where we, we've got a break losing momentum, um, but we're not far away from doing that. And we've got a, a very ambitious squad that are positive and, and we're all working in the right direction. So interesting hearing from Vicky there. We've all seen the photo. I, I'm going to go first. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I actually thought it was a really strong image as well. Um, the thing is, there, so there were quite a lot of comments, uh, replies on Twitter. D I don't know if you, did you have a little read? I always do this. I'm like Here such a little weird stalker. Just get into it then. Oh, oh yeah, I get so <laughs> encouraged. I like seeing what everyone's saying. But overall, positive. But... Is that enough, really? No, it's not. Obviously, yeah. it's nice to show... Nice gesture. Yeah, it's, it's nice to show that you're one club, like, you acting together as one team or something, but I think, don't know, it's, it's Liverpool is such a big club mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and has such a big history. And to be honest, I expected a little bit more from Liverpool to just, don't know, also increase or improve their women's side as well. like. Mm -hmm. Don't know. I, I don't know anything about their facilities, how they train. I just remember, like two years ago or something, they played on this really bad Astro Astro st Stadium, like pitch. not a good pitch. And this also shows a little bit about their standing, maybe in the club. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, don't know. For example, West Ham, they we just train on the same pitches like the men and have the same facilities. And yeah. also, we did a team photo together. It, it's just it's just one thing putting a team photo out and then ignore them again. I, I spoke to Vicky like a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed her for the paper and um, she was saying that, um, she wasn't outright saying it, but like the little thing she was saying was hinting at, you know, that it's had to be quite a big battle to mm -hmm. like to get, to get this stuff. Get stuff. Okay. Mm. Um, and that it like, she's doing a lot of work in the background to get the team taken seriously, which is a real shame because mm. they won the top, they were the ones mm. who knocked uh, Arsenal off their perch. Um, what like 2012, 2013, won back to back leagues with Matt Beard in charge mm -hmm. and now have like just fallen so, so far oh, down. Yeah. So it's like really disappointing because they were investing and I don't know, I don't know what changed what for them happened, to stop yeah. investing. Mm -hmm. Well that's what, so some of the responses here are quite interesting, I'm just going to read a couple. So Ross Quinn says, no point doing all this PR crap if you're going to still treat the team as bad as you were and allowing a team in second division to steal mm. all the players. No mm. one expects City style investment, just enough to not be bottom and possibly challenge. Mm. Uh, this guy, G Pant, says fund the ladies and Paul replied saying, that's great, but maybe invest a bit in the struggling women's team sound that's what they kind of need they need pressure from the yes. from the men's side to like uh, up the game mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The I think women's. it can't be the case that one person maybe in the club or something made the decision oh, I don't like women's football so much so I'm not really supporting it and this is it because we have this discussion in Germany as well with big teams like Borussia Dortmund mm -hmm. they still don't run a women's side like don't have a women's team Schalke who played Champions League for years as well mm -hmm. and they were just I just saw an interview from one man who said uh, we don't know about the capacities, like we don't have enough pitches to run a w female side and it's, it's just a bad excuse, right? And I think this shouldn't be the case, the pressure needs to come from outside as well, that they don't mm -hmm. even have the choice or only one person or two persons maybe make the decision. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just needs to be normal for the women's side as well that they have good facilities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to just put a down on it because mm -hmm. it was a really cool image actually mm -hmm. and yeah. I think it is trying to send a message and trying to have that whole one club aspect to it. So but like now they just need to put, they kind of need to put like their money where their mouth, mouth is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. 
I spent a lot of time in Liverpool. I really love the city, and it is a footballing city. Yeah. Liverpool, like Liverpool, Everton. You're a blue or you're red. You love your club. I really believe that if they really invested in the women's team, that actually a lot of fans yeah. would get behind that club. Mm -hmm. And they need to play nearer as well. I mean, they're playing in Tranmere at the moment, which yeah. is a mission to get to. Like, it's so difficult on public transport to get there. Mm. It takes ages. You have to walk like 20 minutes to the nearest oh. station or whatever. It's just, it's yeah. not that accessible. And you think, look, you look at what Manchester United are doing, surely, like, how well Manchester United are doing, the fact that Everton are on the up is, like, going to push them to think we need to up our yeah. game a little bit. Speaking of Everton, we need to talk about that five-goal thriller on the weekend, 3-2 to Reading. Everton have now lost two, one two. What, I mean, what do we make of them? Two games they lost, though, were quite close. Mm. So, mm. I mean... I'm, I'm really impressed with them this season. I really like yeah. Willie Kirk. I think he's a great manager. Um, and the fact that they've they won their first two games, I think they won three games in the whole of last season. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a big turnaround. Well, step up. Yeah, exactly. And then... Oh, you a hard one. Teams in all And then... Uh, so he's a really good guy. And I went up there and spoke to him and like they gave me like a little tour of the facilities and told me about all the work they're doing to like improve the facilities for the women's team and stuff. But they have um, good facilities, that. It's right? really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like very, very integrated with the men's side. Mm -hmm. Um, and like he's got a plan and he's really good at bringing through young players mm. he, did re he did that really well at Bristol so like I don't think they'll be too down about the, the two losses back to yeah. back because they they played well they could have won both in theory mm. um, so yeah like for me I would have had him as manager of the month like he wasn't even on the mm -hmm. shortlist but mm -hmm. that for me he was like was September manager of the month yeah now we do need to give a shout out to Chloe Kelly each episode we like to highlight a player that's on the rise. And I think it's fair to say that uh, Chloe is a good shout. One player at the Barclays FA WSL Player of the Month for September. Mm -hmm. Scored three goals so far this season. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she got the call up to Lionesses in the last mm -hmm. camp, the senior team. And, I mean, she's great, right? She's definitely one to watch. What, what do we expect from her this season? She's really young, obviously, but I played her last season, obviously, and didn't really know her before. And I was saying, well, this player was really good. And I'll, yeah, obviously, prove me right that she's really good. And mm -hmm. I think she, she has something special in her play. And always so predictable how she plays. And mm. but I really like the, her way of playing. Like she's one of, don't know, for the next generation, definitely one of the outstanding players England is bringing into their yeah. squad. And hopefully she plays a role soon for the Lionesses as well. But I think she's done great so far. Yeah, she's like really confident for someone so mm -hmm. young like she's not afraid to take players right? on yeah. yeah and uh and she like i thought it was really good that she got the call up for england because i think mean, that's one of the criticisms of neville is that he hasn't necessarily called up informed players you mm -hmm. know like with beth england and uh not not getting a call up for the world cup and leah williamson not playing and things like that like so to see her then get the call up i thought was really like re like a really, really good positive. um mm -hmm. step forward like in that sense um, but yeah, I mean, look, like, her two goals against Bristol were cracking. I mean, the second yeah. one was amazing. Yeah. Right, let's do a quick FAWSL roundup. So Manchester City three, Birmingham nil. Kira Walsh on the score sheet, and we actually—I don't know if you guys remember—we yes. shouted her out last time <laughs> as being like, yeah, the player to watch. So you know, no biggie. Just saying. Uh, Liverpool one, Bristol one, Spurs nil, Manchester United three. They'll be happy with that. Brighton one, West Ham three. You'll be happy with that. Like, you look really sad. <laughs> no, I, 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 what's coming now? But now, obviously, Chelsea's saying London is blue, but it's clearer than blue now. There you go. Uh, Reading 3, Everton 2, and Chelsea 2, Arsenal 1. Right, right we're going to talk about stuff that is happening off the pitch. So this is a really big story, especially within the women's game. Um, so Iranian women have been allowed to attend a World Cup qualifier, which is huge news because it's the first time, what, 40 years that they have been allowed to attend a football game, which, I mean, in itself is, is mad. Um, Susie, you've written about this for The Guardian, so can you, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, so, the, I mean, the 40-year ban came in after the uh, Iranian, like, the Iranian Revolution when, like, Islamic fundamentalism started to, to kind of take control of the country, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not an official law, but it's, it's like a sort yeah. of unofficial one. Um, so it's something that, like campaigners do think they can overturn because it's it's not as hard to overturn as a law but um so they i mean the stadium um seats 
I think, 80, over 80,000. Mm. Um, and they selected uh, about 1,000 women fans and then sold tickets to another, like, three and a half, like, two, three and a half thousand. So it's, like, f between three and 4,000 women in the ground, some of those, like, very hand-picked in an 80,000-seater stadium. There are only about 4,000 men there, but they refuse to open up more to the women, which is really bad. And the thing is, is that it's not even um, like it's going to be an ongoing thing. It was a one-off. So they can't, like, you know, they can't go to the league match at the weekend. Um, they, you know, they can't go to the derby. They can't go to the next qualifier. And that's, for me, that's the biggest problem is that, um, that they're sort of getting allowed, being allowed to get away with such these like, little baby steps rather than just throw the ban out, which they should. And they, they're getting away with excuses like, oh, well, we need to sort toilets and we are oh, separate entrances and logistics. And there's like photos of cages being built around sections of, um, sections of seats for the women to be in, separate them and stuff. And it's, um, it's, so a, it's a good step. Like, it's mm. good to see women in the ground, but it does feel a little bit too stage managed for me. Has, has there been much pushback, like during the game, was there much pushback from like protesting outside or anything? There was protesting outside, yeah, yeah and there were, um, there were clashes with, uh, with the police and stuff because there were um, more women trying to get in. I mean, you've got the, the captain of the men's team, he's actually been like, quite outspoken about it and has challenged the Iranian FA on it, and his sister good. is one of the biggest campaigners, and she's never been able to watch him play in Iran. Also, isn't the stadium ironically called like the Stadium of Freedom? Freedom, yeah, it oh. <laughs> translates to freedom, yeah. I mean, oh. the, the sad thing about it is it's still a thing in a lot of places, yeah. to yes. be honest. It's not just, this is just like yeah. one thing that's got the media's attention, and mm -hmm. because it's got the media's attention, they've kind of had to do something about it. Yeah. But when we were doing the podcast in France, we heard plenty of stories where women were so suppressed that they felt scared playing football, they didn't mm. want to tell their parents that they were playing football. Mm. Um, they couldn't access football. You know, this is like a, mm. a larger problem, not just mm. in Iran. Um, but I'm glad it's got the media attention that it has because, mm. like you said, baby steps. I don't I like. It, I didn't expect them to, to make a huge, like lifting of a ban yes, or anything. Yeah. I think yeah, it's yeah. finally good that it's happening, even when it's only three thousand yeah. women mm. being allowed to, yeah, attend this game. But I think the pressure is getting bigger and bigger yeah. and the mm -hmm. women see, um, what was it, the woman who burned herself to death? Yeah, I think that's what caused this, right? Maybe, yeah, exactly. Obviously, it, hopefully it doesn't need things like this to happen to finally get, let them mm. yeah, have access to football games, but just also us speaking about this, mm. I think shows a little bit that the attention is on, on this topic and I think using the platforms a little bit more to make aware of things like this happening and yeah. I think at one point the government or whoever makes the decision at the end um, breaks down and mm -hmm. can't resist to this big mm -hmm. yeah, pressure from outside as well and I think we're all a little bit responsible to yeah, make yeah. aware of these mm -hmm. topics as well. Yeah. This is the hard thing isn't it because here we're talking about you know, uh, women's football being taken more seriously about the attendances yeah. Yeah. a lot, and you can't even yeah, yeah, and you can't even then. It shows how powerful football is as well, isn't it? That yeah. a woman will yeah. set herself on fire for the right oh, to attend a game, tragedy, yeah. um, and like die from her die from her injuries. I mean, we just couldn't like even conceive of that no. here, it, like or, or, the, or the need for it, or ever necessarily feeling like that. But it shows that that how powerful football can be in countries like that as a tool for yeah. fighting yeah, back against oppression totally. generally. Okay, on a more positive note, we need to talk about NWSL's Tony Presley because she's returned to playing literally months after a breast cancer diagnosis and a double mastectomy. Mm. I mean, so she was diagnosed a few months ago, had the operation on the 2nd of August, I think it was, and she, she was back playing mm. on the weekend. I mean, yeah. amazing, right? Yeah, must have been a pretty emotional return, I reckon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've seen quite a lot of clips yeah. from the game. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's lovely, actually. And the reception was so warm. Yeah. And obviously, it's just a breast cancer awareness month or mm -hmm. something right now. We also have a campaign with West Ham in the moment, yeah. playing with these pink shirts. And we had someone who came in to our training ground, speaking in front of us, who was diagnosed as well, went through a chemotherapy. And it's just like, don't know when you know the steps before you could prevent yeah, stuff like this absolutely. happening with like just going to a doctor regularly and yeah checking checking having yourself. a little feel yeah know how, <laughs> how, what to do actually and yeah i'm not mm. saying what to do exactly but it's like when you think of this it's, it's not a big deal doing it every day when you wake up check yourself and yeah. see a doctor regularly and you can not maybe everyone but most of the times you could prevent i think the other key thing to take to that is just like 
even if you're young, fit and healthy, yeah. you still need to get checked mm -hmm. and look after yourself. Because yeah. it, it doesn't really have any rules, cancer, mm -mm. when it comes to people. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great to see her back on the pitch, though. It was yeah. pretty impressive. No, the reception was sick as well. Yeah, it yeah, was, was so nice. It was lovely to see. Yeah. Well done, well Tony. Done. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the NWSL now. Should we take a look at the best goals of the week? Great chance moments ago to nearly open up a rebound. You hear Hill onside. Steps around Murphy and slots it home for the first goal for the Orlando Prime. Well, Hill has been fantastic in the early stages here. Ball. Marta. And that one finds the near post. And Marta has found the equalizer. Well, you had to think it was only a matter of time for the Orlando Pride. And they find the late goal and level things up. Coming from Marta, her sixth goal of the season. Rocky cuts back. Nice little move there. Forward, a shot. What a stunner of a goal! Carly Lloyd! Her eighth of the season. And this game is all tied up. Here's Hayo. At the back of the box. A chance now. Flicked forward. And a goal for North Carolina. Nice corner from Heather O'Reilly. Drop back to Ricaro who gets it up to Davinia. Nice floating shot right there. Looks like it was already in before McDonald's head got a touch on it. Yeah, that's got to be credited to Davinia. Rodriguez with some grass. Looking for Lloyd. But here's Eddie. Now Richardson with the goal! Normally a defender, Richardson, her first goal of the season. And Sky Blue right back in this game, now trailing three. Where was the defense? Yeah. I mean, just totally. Yeah, that was a bit of a hot mess. Yeah. Good goals, though. Uh, so we have the playoff draw. We know who's playing who. Do we want a little recap? Uh, North Carolina Courage are playing Rain FC and Chicago Red Stars. We're playing Portland Thorns. Now, North Carolina Courage have won the Shield and mm -hmm. um, they finished five points clear at the top of the table. Do we have any predictions? Anyone going to be bold enough? Monkey! <laughs> I'm going to say Courage. I think everyone agrees Courage, though. No? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice, uh, like, from a romantic point of view, if uh, Heather O'Reilly plays and scores, that would be good. I'd mm -hmm. like to yeah. see that, purely because, okay. you know, she's re uh, retiring. So that would, that would be a nice touch. Nice story. But, yeah. <laughs> They're, they're going to win. Well, you can watch the playoff semis this weekend and the final on the 27th of October on BT Sport 2 and ESPN 2. Now, each episode, we like to highlight a grassroots organisation that's doing a lot within the game. And this week, we're going to talk about Mundial's women's team, Sporting Club de Mundial. We sent Drew to check it out. Hi, guys. So here at Copper 90, we love grassroots football. So we've come down to Monday and Mag's new team, Sporting Club de Mundial. Going to go get involved. We're going to go speak to the team. Watch these tickers. Obviously, the club started this summer. It's really important to give an opportunity to, to girls who didn't have a club. We wanted to be an inclusive club where there was no kind of trials or nothing like that. Uh, these, are, these are really things we, we didn't want the club to be based around. Hopefully, it'll enable girls to, to want to get involved and, and we can see more teams be set up. It's for beginners as well as people who've played before. So it's, it's, you know, it's not too slow for people, it's not too fast for people. Actually, it's an environment where they're putting in the session that requires any ability to be able to play to start with. They've just made it really welcoming. I think everybody, the girls as well as the coaches, just made it really welcoming, no pressure, uh, turn up, very professional, which is a nice balance between it's fun, but it's also, we're not here just to mess about, we're here to play as well, which I really appreciate. Regardless of abilities, you know, our training sessions are very adaptive. At the same time, you know, we don't want to create a segregation where, you know, we may have some really advanced players and some people that have 
not played football in 10 years. We wanted to create an environment and sessions which brings the both best of both worlds, basically. I hate the term women's football because football is football, regardless. And we're just one big family. That was such a good session. A huge shout out to Mundial for having us. Make sure that you keep up to date and follow the ladies' progress at Mundial Mag, and we'll see you soon. Sporting Club de Mundial will be competing in the Super 5 League in Hackney. So if you are interested, head to the Super 5 League website and register. And you guys can follow their progress at Mundial Mag and see how they get on throughout the season. Make sure that you drop your comments below and tweet us at Copper90 with any other grassroots organisations that you think we should shout out and any other ways in getting involved in playing. But guys... That's it from mm -hmm. us. Mm. I know, Julia, you're fun. gutted. Yes, I could speak so much more, you know. Oh, <laughs> we'd love to chat all day, but we just yes. don't have time. Uh, <laughs> where can these guys follow you? Not your addresses, but, you know, just general social media vibe. Instagram. Monkey? <laughs> Instagram, uh, yeah, I'm Monkey DJ on Instagram. She I'm, thinks. I think, yeah. Great. And then on Twitter, I'm Monkey underscore DJ with an I. Uh, Instagram is, I think, Simich Julia. And... Twitter is just Julia Simich. <laughs> Just bring you a little bit of Susie. <laughs> Susie Rack on both. Oh, good, mate. Organised. Finally, someone is organised. Continuity. <laughs> uh, if you guys would like to join in the conversation, tweet us at Copper19. You can join the Facebook group, Football is Football, linked below. Yes. Post your comments because we want to hear from you and we want to feature them in the show. Right, that is it. We will see you guys back here after the next round of FAWSL fixtures.